During the recent winter storm that took down a little more than half of Texas's power systems, there was much made of the few wind turbines that failed, largely because their operators did not install the simple heaters or even the water-resistant coatings on the blades and turbine that are required by law in most jurisdictions. I suppose it's a lot more visual for news outlets and politicians with an axe to grind to show wind turbines covered with ice than it is to show a natural gas power plant building that has failed completely, but still looks the same as it always does from the outside. However, the simple fact is that the Texas Energy Regulator planned for wind power to produce 7,070 megawatts of power during peak times. And in general, most of the wind turbines, even in this storm, did their job by the regulator's own figures, which are suspect by the way, Wind power produced 4,400 to almost 8,100 megawatts at different times during that storm. Not bad when you consider that their coal and natural gas power generation was responsible for a massive 30,000 lost megawatts of power. Also largely because their plants and their pipelines and their wellheads were not prepared with even basic winterization, like heaters as exist all over the US and certainly in Canada and other parts of the world. Beyond these facts, however, we heard nothing about how home solar protected thousands of people from this apocalyptic event. We'd like to interject for just a few seconds and ask you to click like, and if you like this type of thing, please click subscribe. Both of those things make a huge difference in the Google algorithm. We mostly talk about electric vehicles, the energy industry and high technology. And we take on both sides of issues. We try to stick with facts. Thanks, back to the show. As someone with solar panels, I can tell you that there is a comfort from having secondary power sources that I am responsible for, making me less reliant on external power suppliers to keep my family safe. Take a listen to the short interview with one of the United States' largest residential and commercial solar companies about how People that are more concerned with their family's safety than they are about politics have continued to flock to solar for their homes after this event. Yeah, Emily, you know, it's a really unfortunate event and one that uh, we should actually expect more of if we don't take the opportunity to modernize and decarbonize our energy infrastructure. You know, Texas has a, an incredibly broad fuel source mix, and I think pointing to a specific source of fuel is, is really uh, mispointing the, the direction here. There's a huge opportunity in front of us. You know, our customers in Texas with solar and energy storage systems uh, were able to provide resilience not only for themselves, but also for the grid at large. Uh, customers saw thousands of hours of backup energy from their homes where they were able to power through while other folks were out of power. And then for every home that has their own sited generation and storage, you know, we alleviate stress on the grid overall. In addition, in, in other instances like this in, in California last year, we're able to dispatch surplus energy back to the grid to actually help alleviate the problem. And so. I think you know taking the moment to update the infrastructure, provide more distributed resources as well versus the centralized systems that, that tend to fail. The the I, I wanted to ask about the bright speaking of consumers, the bright box expansion in Texas and how many people that's been made available to and how that could help in another power failure. Yeah, so in, in Texas, we had hundreds of customers with uh, with Brightbox energy storage solutions at their home. We've deployed more than 16,000 of them nationwide, and, and we've seen this in every major failure. When you see wildfires in California, and storms in the Northeast, and, and most recently here in Texas, customers are able to have backup power on demand when they need it and make it through these types of events. So uh, let's talk then about, do you think that this the controversy has will be will we'll set back the industry at all, given the discussion that ensued and the continued denial of climate change. You know, I really don't think so. I think, in fact, you see the trends accelerating on the heels of these events in Texas, you know, from consumers driving pull here, we saw a 350% increase in web traffic in, in the state after uh, the events. Customers realized that their friends and family members who have solar and storage at their homes are getting a better service than what's been provided by the legacy utility operators. And so uh, they're attracted to the reliability, they're attracted to clean energy, 
and they're attracted to the affordability of the solution where we price at a discount relative to the incumbent utility. And so I think that consumer poll is positive. And then from a policy point of view, you see regulators pushing on this. It's been a meaningful creator of jobs locally and, and high paying jobs at that. And so, you know, there's a lot of demand, uh, you know, for more of these resources, both from consumers and from policymakers. Please put your comments below and we'll get back to you usually within a day. If you like this video, we'd really appreciate it if you would click like. And if you like this type of thing, please click subscribe. Both of those things make a huge difference in the Google algorithm. We mostly talk about electric vehicles, the energy industry, and high technology. And we take on both sides of issues. We really try to avoid politics and the random opinion claims of either fanboys or political partisans. We try to stick with facts. And if you have any other questions and concerns, you can always get a hold of us at www.partisanissues.com. Thanks.